And this video I build to me is classic 1977 release, the 135th scale Gepard Flak Panzer. This kit first saw the light of day in 1977, so I guess by uh, today's standards it's a bit of a golden oldie, although, dare I say, I remember when this was released. It's a pretty cool kit. You can see originally it was designed to have an electric motor in it, so if that worries you, you'll have to actually plug the bottom of the hull. Uh, the kit these days is moulded in the Philippines, but um, they've taken good care of the moulds and everything is still really sharp and nicely detailed. To me, are a bit ahead of the game back in the 70s with their um, armoured fighting vehicles. And although it's aged a little bit, and there are modern competitors to this kit now, it still looks pretty good for its age. Uh, you'll also notice that we get the classic, uh, to me, of vinyl tracks, although they have been updated a little bit because these new ones actually can be glued together using super glue, which is really nice. The instructions are again classic to me, are printed in black and white. For the most part they're clear, but sometimes the specific location of a part is a bit vague in the instructions. The paint guide uses generic references for colours and you'll have to do it your own research if you want to know more about the correct colours for the kit. More on that later. This feature you're seeing here, here is also a really nice feature. Basically, it's a little piece of mesh, and I wasn't expecting this to work anywhere near as well. But you put that on, you sandwich the top of the engine uh, air intake underneath it, and it looks really good on the finished model. It's a simple idea, works really well. For priming, I used Autoborn Black Sealer, which is a polyurethane-based primer similar to Steinal Res. 
I thinned it with Italeri's acrylic thinner and a drop or two of Liquitex Flow Improver added to it just to help it flow through the air gun. This brand of primer isn't all that familiar to many modelers but it's an excellent range and I plan to talk about it a bit more in a future video. I originally painted the kit wheels using the instructions recommended olive green, but the colour just didn't look quite right when I compared it to some online references. I did a little research and that showed the correct colour for the West German tank should have been RAL6014 yellow olive. Fortunately I had the correct shade in the Ataka paint set for the Australian Armoured Vehicles of all things, and I got to repainting the wheels and I was much happier with the correct colour. This was the first time I'd used a paint mask to paint the wheels and I have to say what a game changer that was. I honestly don't know why I didn't do it sooner. It took what had been a very tedious task and made the whole thing just that much easier and quicker to do. I did end up nonetheless doing a little bit of touch up on the wheels but this was far easier than trying to paint them all with a paintbrush. Okay, so I've got some highlights there on the model and for the top coat I'm going to be using the Fataka um, Yellow Olive which is the correct colour for West German and in order for some of that to show through and make it a bit easier you could just thin the paint down enough that it will become visible but the product I like to use is called Transparenter which is an Amomig product you put about 20% of this um, with your paint uh, so like eight drops of your paint, two drops of this, and then you thin it down like you normally would. And basically this is just like the material that um, Ammo MIG use in their paints without the pigments. So it does thin the paint, it does make it a, opaque, but it still lets the paint behave normally. And it seems to be quite compatible with a lot of different acrylic brands. So we'll give that a go and you can see what the result looks like in a few minutes. Decals were surprisingly good and settled well. I used for the first time Ammo MIG's Ultra Decal Set and Fix, which is a two part system, and I have to say, early impressions were very positive. For the barrels I painted them in Vallejo Metal Colors Gun Metal Grey and then used to me as smoke color thinned with lacquer thinner to darken the barrels to the final shade I wanted. I used VMS's excellent pigment and binders for the weathering. Check out their website if you want to see some of their tutorial videos which are, do a much better job of explaining how these work than I can. Suffice to say that the binders allow you to make sure the pigment sticks to the model, but you can also use it to take away some of the pigment if you put too much on.
To simulate the light rusting that occurs on the edge of the leopard tracks, I used some of Mr. Hobby's Weathering Pastel Set Number 2 Rust, which worked really well with the VMS binder. Now weathering I do would be complete without some application of the Tamiya Weathering Master pastels. I honestly consider these to be indispensable for any weathering project. That's what I'm looking for. The level of detail in the kit is reasonable for the kit's age, it really is. Although not in the same league as some of the new releases out there. Still, the Tamiya kit, like a lot of their older tildings, is sold at a very competitive price and it's actually listed typically for half the price of a typical tack-on kit of the same subject. Given that, I think the kit stacks up pretty well. Oh, by the way, I've put the correct colour name and code for the paint you need for this kit in the description below. Well, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscribe because it really does help YouTube discover these videos for other modelers. With all that said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video.